Thank you, Betsy. Um, and I'm glad to be here and, uh, speaking, speaking to you about Proposal 1. Uh, it is a very complex proposal. The League of Women Voters has one of its objectives to provide information for the public on items on the ballot. We do voter guides for, ca uh, for candidate races and for proposals uh, we, such as this one at the state level, uh, we are doing presentations. We do have a voter guide online. I'll talk about that later. Uh, but we are uh, do, we're going around the state. There's actually four of us. We've got 25 uh, sessions like this scheduled around the state of Michigan. Okay, so ballot, uh, the May 5th uh, ballot proposal 15-1. Uh, what is it and what would it do? Next slide. Um, the League of Women Voters, as I said, uh, our goal is to provide information. And today we're going to uh, give you uh, what, what is the proposal, how did it come about, and uh, what are, talk about the revenue, talk about the expenditures, uh, and then tell you what the yes side and what the no side are saying. And the League does not have a position uh, on this proposal. Sometimes uh, on things we have studied, we do take positions. We have not studied roads. We have no position on it. This is strictly an information meeting. Okay. Um, I'm going to first tell you a little bit about the road situation. Uh, the legislative history behind this proposal, uh, read the ballot wording, tell you about the revenue into this proposal, the expenditures with that, uh, you, that will use that revenue, uh, talk about the, the amendment and the 10 laws that will become uh, effective with this, if this proposal passes, explain what the supporters are saying and who they are and what the opponents are saying and who they are. And finally, I'll give you some websites you can go to to get more information. Okay. Roads. Um, if there's one thing that both the yes and the no side agree on is our roads are bad. Um, in Michigan today, uh, we have 17% of our roads that are considered in good position, 45% that are in fair condition, and 38% that are in bad condition. 10 years ago, we only had 10% of our roads in bad position. Uh, okay. What have we been, uh, how have we been spending state money? How much of it have we had to spend on roads? Um, first of all, where does the money for roads come from? It comes from two major sources. One source is the gasoline tax. And I'll be explaining what part, of the, what part of what you pay at the pump is the gasoline tax. But the state has a gasoline tax of 19 cents a gallon on uh, gasoline and 15 cents on diesel. And that money goes for transportation. Um, it also comes when you go out and you get your license plates every year, your vehicle registration fees. The money from that is a substantial amount of the money that goes for roads. So those are the two big sources for road funding. From those two sources, what have we had? In 2000, fiscal year 2002, we've had $2 billion. Uh, in 2004, we had $2.1 billion. And this is, I say, just the state funding part of it. And that is the most we've ever had. And then it started going down, and, and it's at, been at $1.9 billion for several years. Uh, and that's, that's where it is today. So you're, you might ask, why did it go down? Well, there's two major reasons. One is that cars are getting more efficient. They're getting be better gas mileage. So you're going to sell less gallons of gasoline. The second is that we have fewer people in Michigan, and there are less uh, miles being driven. And so less gasoline is being bought. So those are the major reasons it's gone down. At the same time, expenses have gone up because they've also they've gone up with inflation. Okay, so uh, in Michigan we have 122,000 miles of public road. Um, let's talk about how Michigan compares in road spending to uh, to the rest of the union. Michigan in Michigan we spend 154 dollars per capita for roads. 
that is, we're number 50. We have the lowest amount per capita of any state in the union. Ohio has $214 uh, uh, a person. Um, uh, uh, other neighboring states like Indiana, 289, Wisconsin, 302, Illinois, 412, and Pennsylvania is uh, five, 530. Uh, at the same time, uh, there's an, uh, you, you can see the uh, uh, annual cost of repair that, co that people incur uh, because of uh, uh, think, having, having to fix their cars and so forth. And um, Michigan's uh, similar to, to most of the states in that. Um, as I said, Michigan has 122,000 miles of road. Ohio has 123,000 miles of road. So we have about the same number of miles of roads. They get, from their state uh, taxations and fees, they get about $3 billion. We get about $2 billion. So they have uh, $1 billion more to spend on roads than we have for about the same number of roads in Michigan as they do. So um, the governor, uh, uh, the first bullet there just basically says what I've been saying, that the amount we have for spending for roads has gone down uh, over the past decade. Uh, from that two, bil two billion it was uh, uh, 10 years before to about 100, 100 uh, to 1.9 mil million, um, a billion. Um, and while those costs have gone up. The governor actually, you know, initially in 2011, uh, later in the year, in the fall, did say he wanted to get some more money for roads, but he really emphasized it in his 2013 State of the State speech. And in that speech, he asked for $1.2 billion additional dollars to spend on roads. So what happened? Uh, well, um, the House in May of 2014, the House passed uh, legislation raising money for roads. Their legislation would have raised $450 million, and it would have done it, uh, and it would have been a gradual phase, phase in and phase out, would have phased out the fact that you pay sales tax at the pump on gasoline. So it would have increased the amount that went for gasoline tax and therefore for roads. And, and I don't know how many of you know how much of the sales tax goes for roads. Sales tax does not go for roads. 4.4 of your cents of your six cents of the sales tax goes for a school aid fund. 0 0.6 of the six cents goes to local governments and one cent goes to the general fund. So that is the situation with the sales tax. You all pay it on gasoline right now, uh, but it's not going for roads. Only the gasoline tax, the fuel tax part of uh, taxes, of state taxes that you pay goes for roads. So, um, oh, I, I talked about the House bill, and so the House bill was gonna phase out the sales tax and not replace it, which would have, uh, based on what I just told you, impacted uh, schools and local governments in particular. Um, the, the Senate was not willing to pass the House bill. The Senate came up with its own bill, which was much closer to what the governor asked for. It was a bill that would raise $1 billion, so it was close to 1.2, and it did it strictly by raising the gasoline tax and uh, not touching the sales tax part of what you pay at the pump. Um, neither House would agree to the other's uh, bill, and we came to an impasse. So what happened? A lame duck session, the governor and the four leaders of the House and the Senate, the two uh, Republican leaders and the two Democratic leaders got in a room and they had a chalkboard and they sat down and they wrote what they wanted to accomplish and how they were figure out how to accomplish it. And the proposed solution, they would raise the tax on motor fuels and exempt motor fuel from the sales tax. The House absolutely insisted on that. That would help lower pr the price at the pump, uh, even though they were raising it at the pumps um, because you weren't gonna pay sales tax anymore at the pump. And it would ensure that all taxes you paid at the pump went for transportation. But doing that, ex uh, exempting motor fuel from the sales tax cost revenue for schools and local government. 
So to handle that, they decided to raise the sales and the use tax from 6 to 7% so that schools and local governments um, would uh, be made whole and actually gain a little revenue, as you will see. But, but as many of uh, people know, uh, sales tax is considered regressive because it more significantly impacts you the lower your income. As much more impa in uh, impact on low income people than it does on high income people because of the amount of their, uh, they buy things, not services. Higher income people tend to buy more services and in Michigan we don't tax services. Um, so they decided to up the earned income tax credit and I will, and that goes for the employed and lower income people. Uh, so I will talk about that. So that's the solution. So what happened um, in the legislature? Um, well, as I said, the, the leaders, uh, Snyder, uh, uh, Bolger in the House, uh, and Richardville in the Senate, the Republicans, and Grimel in the House, and Whitmer in the Senate, they agreed uh, on this. The House voted first, and this is December 19th of 2014, and their vote um, was 94 to 16. It was a mix of Republicans and Democrats that were for it and against it. And it needed, because of the fact that they wanted to raise the sales tax, it needed, they needed to take it to the, public, to the people to vote on. Because all the taxes that we have in Michigan except for the sales tax. Most of them the legislature can up, but the sales tax only the people can vote to increase that. So in order to increase it from six to a 7% maximum, they had to ask the public. And so they had, and to do that, because they were gonna ask for a constitutional amendment, they needed a two thirds vote. So they did get it in the House quite handily. In the Senate, um, they needed a 26 to 12. The, actually their first vote was 25. <laughs> to 13 and finally one person changed their mind and they got their two thirds vote. So both houses uh, gave a two thirds vote to put it on the ballot so that the, the people would decide about raise, uh, raising the sales tax. Um, now, the, the legislation does not just raise the sales tax. They also passed 10 laws and I'll be talking about those. Those 10 laws are what actually raised the money like the gasoline tax and, uh, and talked about how it was spent, how it would be raised, et cetera. So there were a lot of other f features in this besides this raising the sales tax. Um, so that, um, I think that's about it on that one. So now let me read you the ballot language. And the ballot language uh, was done by the Secretary of State's office and approved by the State Board of Canvassers. It consists of two parts, uh, and I have two slides. The first slide's what I'll call the title, and that doesn't have a word limit. And the second part of it is the actual ballot wording, uh, which has a 100-word limit. So they couldn't tell you, ev you know, every little thing that the bills did, but they told tell you the main things. So the uh, proposal 15.1 says, a proposal to amend the state constitution to increase the sales and use tax from six to 7% to replace and supplement reduced revenue to the school aid fund and local units of government caused by the elimination of the sales and use tax on gasoline and diesel fuel for vehicles operating on the public roads and to give effect to laws that provide additional money for roads and other transportation purposes by increasing the gas tax and vehicle registration fees. Okay, and here's now the official 100 words. The proposed constitutional amendment would eliminate the sales and use tax on gasoline and diesel fuel for vehicles on public roads it would increase the portion of the use tax dedicated to the school aid fund. It would expand use of the school aid fund to community colleges and career technical education and prohibit use for four-year colleges and universities. And it would give effect to laws, including those that increase the sales and use tax to 7% as authorized by constitutional amendment, increase gasoline and diesel fuel tax and adjust annually for inflation, increase vehicle registration fees, and dedicate revenue for roads and other transportation purposes. 
It would expand competitive bidding and warranties for road projects and increase the earned income tax credit. Should this proposal be pe pe adopted, yes or no? Okay, so now I'm going to talk about, first I'm going to talk about the revenue side, and then I'll talk about the expenditures. And all of my figures come from the House Fiscal Agency, which is an a agency of the legislature that is charged with analyzing every bill that goes through the House for its effect on, uh, financial effect on Michigan. Um, and all the numbers I'm actually going to put up here are numbers for the 2017-18 fiscal year, and I'll explain why they're a little different the first two years as I go along, um, because that's when it stabilizes to what is pretty much going to be long term. Okay. So as you know, uh, today the current Michigan Constitution says we can have uh, the sales tax maximum is 6 percent, um, and uh, uh, the same for the use tax. Um, and we do not pay, uh, people do not pay sales uh, tax on uh, food at the grocery store or on prescription drugs. That won't change. Um, sales tax is levied at the re uh, retail when you buy things and the use tax on things like hotel rooms and uh, internet sales and so forth. What does the ballot proposal say uh, relative to, to the sales and the use tax? It says it will amend the Michigan Constitution to say, change the sales and use tax rate to a maximum of 7% or 7 cents on the dollar. And that will raise $1.6 billion in fiscal year 2017 and 18. It also amends the Constitution to eliminate the 6% sales tax on the sale of gasoline, and that will cost the, the state of Michigan $829 million. So the net gain is about $730 million. Where does Michigan rank in terms of sales tax uh, among the 50 states? Uh, we are considered 37th. And where did that come from? Well, there's two kinds of sales tax. There's state sales tax and city, uh, a local sales tax. Michigan does not have, uh, does not allow local sales taxes. So our 6% is what we people pay in sales tax in Michigan. But in many states, they have uh, local taxes. And for instance, Tennessee has, is, its average local tax is 2.45% and it has a sales tax of 7%. So the average pers the person in Tennessee is gonna pay 9.45 cents uh, when they buy things. Um, Illinois, uh, six and a quarter plus 1.91 for eight, 0.18%. Ohio, 5.75 plus 1.36 or 7.11%. Indiana has no uh, local tax like Michigan, so they have 7%. And they're at tw in 21st place. If we increase uh, uh, our, our sales tax, we will be with Indiana in 21st place. Wisconsin is the lowest at 5 and 0 043 Um and what does this mean to you uh, when, well, what, in the price of gas? Um, and I have two examples here. This is from the Citizens Research Council of Michigan's um, uh, a document uh, on this. Um, there are actually three taxes that people pay on gas uh, at the pump right now. They pay a federal gas tax, which is 18 cents a gallon. Doesn't matter what the price of gas is, 18 cents a gallon. They pay a state gas tax in Michigan of 19 cents a gallon. Again, this is a gallon. Uh, it's not uh, um, a, a price of gas dependent. And then they pay a sales tax, which is 6%. So it price varies depending on the price of gas. Um, and if the retail price is about what we have today at $2.40, that's basically a pre-retail or a wholesale price of 190 plus they actually apply the sales tax to the to that 190 plus the federal tax so they apply the sales tax to the 207 and which is why it's 13 cents in that particular example that you're paying at the pump if pump is like it was about a year or so before if the price of gas is 383 
you pay the 18 federal and the 19 state, but you paid 21 cents sales tax. So the price, uh, uh, so that was the price. So the new um, gasoline tax will actually be about 41 point cents, uh, the initial year would be 41.7 cents uh, a gallon. And that is based on 14.9% of what gasoline was the previous fiscal year, and when it was a much higher rate at the pump. And that's where that's the that's basically the floor for what the gasoline tax will be. It will not go down from that. It may go up with inflation, but never more than five cents. So it, it uh, so what you see there is the current price of gas today. If it's two forty at the gallon, you're paying fifty cents in taxes. Uh, if we do away, if this proposal passes, no sales tax on gasoline, so it's zero on that line. But the price of gasoline, the, the, the tax on gasoline is 42 cents. You're paying 60 cents. So gasoline will go up about 10 cents. Uh, however, if gasoline were like it was about a year or so ago, it would actually only be going up 2 cents. Now, it does mean there's a lot more money for roads because the sales tax never went for roads. So it was always only the federal tax and the state gas tax that was going for roads. Um, so they only had 37 cents before to spend, and now they would have 60 cents to spend uh, per gallon on roads. Okay. All right. Um, so if you look at the pie chart, the state restricted funding coming from the gasoline tax and vehicle registration fees is about two. Uh, uh, and this is for transportation, not specifically for road, for transportation. That is $2.2 billion, or about 58% of the transportation budget. The federal t a gas tax gives another $1.2 billion, and that is about 33% uh, of the spending for transportation. And by the way, I just learned when I uh, searched the answer for so something somebody else asked us. We actually get back one dollar and three cents for every one dollar we s we 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 uh, collect in Michigan on the gas tax, but from the federal government we get actually get three cents more. Um, and finally, um, the last year they did take some money out of the general fund. They took two hundred eighty-five million dollars out of the general fund. So it was a total of three point seven billion dollars for the two thousand fourteen fifteen fiscal year. Um, and if the pro proposal passes, it would add $1.255 million to state restricted funds so that we have about $5 billion for transportation. And when I talk about expenditures, I'll tell you how that's spent. Okay. I mentioned that the other major source of funding is the vehicle registration fee. Um, and of state funding. So it's a little over 40%, whereas the gasoline tax was uh, almost 60%. Um, and right now, today, when you buy a car, you pay a vehicle, a vehicle registra your license plate fee, your vehicle registration fee, is based on the list price of the car you buy. So if you buy a $30,500 car, you'll pay about $153 in um, vehicle registration fee. And the next year, when you renew your license plate today, uh, that goes down by 10%. And then the next year, another 10 and then another 10. So that by uh, three years down the road, you're paying vehicle registration fee, which is 73% of the original fee, or uh, $153 for a $30,000 car, it would be about $112 or $41 less. And then you stay at that. I have a seven-year-old car, so my price, my vehicle registration be, uh, fee's been about $100 for several years. Um, and that's actually the average price most people are paying on vehicle registration fees between 100 and 110 uh, now. Um, what is the, the um, one of the laws that's in this package do? It um, eliminates that 10% discount such that the original vehicle registration fee that you pay when you buy a new car stays stays for year after year. It does not affect uh, cars 
that already all the way down. They, they stay, I mean, you, you don't go back up to where your original price was, but you stay at where you are. But if somebody buys an, a car after January 1st of next year, they will, the first year they'll pay the same vehicle registration fee that they paid in the past. But the next year, they'll still pay that same number. It won't be 10% less, et cetera. So um, that combination of that change raises about $62 million uh, for the transportation fund. So it's not a lot compared to the gasoline tax side, but there's some. Um, also, truck registration fees go up, and trucks are based on weight. And so, uh, and depending on the weight, they'll go up from 100 to $1,000. Uh, um, and that will increase by 39.8% million dollars. And finally, um, they are going to impose a surtax on hybrid and electric vehicles. Uh, that will raise about $600 million, uh, and, and I can tell you what those numbers are, because a hybrid that's under 8,000 pounds will get, have to pay $25 when they get their license plate, and an all-electric would have to pay 75 If they were over uh, 8,000 pounds, they would have to uh, pay 100 and 200 so that's that's that. Okay. So this is this sort of summarizes all the revenue side. Um, the increase in the sales and use tax brings in one uh, uh, one billion five hundred and fifty nine million, but we lose eight hundred and twenty nine million dollars uh, uh, because we no longer have sales tax on gasoline. So effectively, the in additional revenue from the sales tax is seven hundred and uh, Twenty-nine uh, million uh, eight hundred thousand dollars, and that's about thirty-four percent of the increase. The increase in the fuel tax will bring in about one billion three hundred and twelve million nine hundred thousand for transportation, uh, and I'm separating the words transportation and roads. You'll notice, um, and that's about sixty-one percent. The increase in the, in the registration fees for cars, 62 million, for trucks about 40 million, and, and electric and hybrid cars under uh, a million. So for a total of uh, $2,145,000 of additional revenue. Okay, um, so the, the road funds are, how, how things are allocated, there's, there's a lot of things that are in the Constitution and some things in laws. Um, and this is what uh, the Michigan, we, we have the Michigan Transportation Fund and we also have Public Act 51 of 1951. And what it says is there's some money taken off the top for a bridge fund and for the public transportation, uh, what's called the Comprehensive Transportation Fund. And that's roughly about 10% uh, of what uh, we're going to collect uh, from those two transportation sources, um, and also the federal tax. Um, then, of the money that's left, uh, it's basically split 39.1% to Michigan Department of Transportation, um, which has about 8% of the road miles, but they have a lot wider roads, and so it's a lot more lanes and a lot more expensive roads to build. It gets 39.1% going to county road commissions for about 75% of road miles, and a lot of your city miles are county miles. A lot of your major city miles are actually uh, handled by the county. Uh, and then 21.8% goes to cities and villages for about 17% uh, of the road f uh, f miles. So that's, that's how it's split. It's been split like that for... Uh, decades. Um, <clears throat> and there's one exception to that. If the legislature uh, adds some money to the transportation fund from the general fund, they don't have to follow those rules. They can specify how to spend it. So that $285 million I told you before, or $115 million in another year, um, those were the legislature decided how to spend that additional money uh, that they added to the fund. So <clears throat> what's the total amount, as I said, that will go specifically to roads? Um, out of the $1.313 billion, it's $1.255 billion that goes to roads. Um, and based on the formula I gave you, that's 
uh, 0.8 million for the state road fund, 498.8 billion for the county roads, and 273.6 million for cities and villages. Okay, um, I should um, make one more. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that later. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some of the other money. The other money that's in the transportation fund, as I said, some of it goes to public transit. $116 million uh, specifically out of this additional money will go for public transit. Again, that's not something the legislature's deciding. That's already been decided. Um, and this, again, has been, that's the way it's been for decades. And finally, there is one more item that comes out of the, out of the transportation funds, and that's also in the Michigan Constitution. Uh, $20 million will go for the Michigan Conservation and Reg Recreation Legacy Fund, and that's for uh, trails in like public parks for road vehicles. So that's what that's for. So those are the th three things that come out of the transportation funding increase. Now I'm going to talk about um, the sales tax and uh, how the, the increased funding from that will be spent. Um, actually, the largest amount uh, of additional funds is the $442 million that will go to the general fund. But they, one of the laws that was passed uh, said that they were going to devote $269 million of that for the earned income tax credit. The earned income tax credit um, is a, it's, it began as a federal credit in 1975, my understanding is, uh, for working people uh, to encourage them to work and, and gave them a credit against working income, not against their, any welfare, but against working income so that, you know, if they went to work, they, would, they wouldn't go backwards. Um, and there is a, an earned income tax credit at the federal level. Michigan passed a law to give an earned income tax credit at the state level, and that law originally said 20% of what the federal amount is. In 2011, when changes were made f uh, relative to business taxes, they changed that to 20% from 20% to 6%. So today, the earned income tax credit from the state of Michigan is 6% of the federal credit, not 20%. Uh, one of the uh, laws in this package will increase that back to 20%. And that is an attempt to do something about the regressive nature of the sales tax um, and so that uh, the lo lower income working people are not penalized uh, by uh, this, new, this new proposal to fix the roads. Uh, now the school aid fund. Let me talk about the middle bullet first. Um, the the one percent sales tax will seven hundred and fifty two million of it is replacement money uh, for schools and local governments that uh, they lose because they take the took away the uh, uh, sales tax on gasoline. So some of the sales in, you know the the sale of the six to seven percent sales tax increase is going for that. Um, the 200 million is an additional amount going to the school aid fund above that amount. Um, and that, the, the governor was, one, was quoted at one time saying that was for, because they've added community colleges. Um, there's also f uh, one, other one of the laws earmarks $40 million for the at-risk program for low-income people that, where the kids have poor grades, uh, uh, and other problems, uh, and they're at risk. So uh, that's one of the other things. And finally, one of the things in the amendment is that universities, which now can get money out of the school aid fund, something they didn't used to do, but they started to do a few years ago, uh, was take it, uh, university money out of there. That they no longer, they, there's no longer the wording higher education in the Constitution, and so they, and they, were, they will not be able to do that. Okay, so one of the things people always often ask is, where does the school aid fund come from that goes to schools? And we do spend a lot of money on schools. Um, and the biggest source is the sales tax. 
That's 46 percent uh, of the money for schools today before this increase. 46 percent goes uh, from uh, the sales tax. Um, the second source is the income tax, 21 percent. The s third source is the state education tax. That's something that you probably know of uh, uh, better as your local property tax that you pay for schools. You know, you pay since 1994 when they ha when they uh, passed Proposition A of 1994, um, six mills. Uh, property tax for all schools in Michigan uh, is being paid and sent to the state for their state education tax fund. Another 18 mills on businesses and non-residential property uh, is also being spent. So that comes from what people pay in, in local property taxes, which goes into that fund and then is just distributed back to the schools. So that's what the state education tax is. Those are the three biggies. Um, people are always surprised that lottery only raises 6.5%. Um, that's, it, and it is all the money other than what goes to the winners, uh, but it's only 6.5% of the school fund. 4% from the use tax and 7% from a number of other smaller sources. Okay. Revenue sharing. Um, currently, the revenue sharing is one uh, point, uh, a, a one thousand two hundred one billion two hundred and twenty six uh, billion uh, is allocated for revenue sharing to local governments again this is uh, constitute by, by the Constitution um, <clears throat> the ballot proposal would raise it a hundred and eleven million uh, that is basically the amount they took away uh, when they changed the business tax um, ta taxes relative to business from uh, the the revenue sharing. So again, like the earned income tax credit, they are restoring it to what it was then. Uh, so that is the purpose of, uh, that's that part of it. So here's a summary of what I've just said. Um, the, the three items that come from uh, the uh, gasoline tax and vehicle registration fee are the roads at 1.255 um, billion. Um, the public transportation at 116 million and the recreation improvement uh, at 20 million. Um, the earned income tax credit of 269 um, a million, the school aid fund at 200 million, uh, the revenue uh, general fund at 173 million and revenue sharing at 111 million come from the sales tax increase. Again, a total of $2,145,000,000. dollars. Okay, now we are here, we are in Wayne County, so I'm gonna, one more. Um, this is for all the places we're talking, all the counties we know we're going to speak in. <laughs> so, uh, Wayne County. Wayne County, um, the current funding is $59.1 million. And in the first year, they'll get a little bit, an, about a little bit more than 20% more of that, or $12.4 million. Sure, sure, go ahead. So it's the bottom line there. By the way, um, we do have uh, uh, these slides uh, uh, online, so yeah. It's, uh, okay. uh, <coughs> all right, so what, what uh, as I, when I started, I said there was one, an amendment and 10 laws. So what's the difference between an amendment and laws? Well, if it's a constitutional amendment, it can't be changed unless you vote again. So anything that, the five items I have listed there as part of the constitutional amendment are things that you'd have to vote on again if, you want, if they were going to change. But the items that are in the laws that go into effect if the constitutional amendment passes, those are items that the legislature could change. Um, so what could the legislature not change? And that was House Joint Resolution UU um, without a vote of the people. The first one should say uh, to increase the sales tax maximum allowed. The Constitution just changes the number that's allowed. It doesn't actually change the, ta the, the rate. That's, you can't change, they can't change that. So you, you can't go over 8%, um, uh, to, you know, can't go up to 8% without you voting or, or any other number over seven. Um, it eliminates, the, they decided to put the elimination of the sales tax and use tax on motor fuel into the Constitution. Today, the Constitution talks about eliminating sales tax on 
food in the grocery store and uh, prescription drugs, that's still there. They added a third item that, that, that can't uh, have sales tax on it. Can't be changed without you voting. Uh, since they increased the tax from, from six cents of the, percent of the sales tax from 6% to 7%, they also increased the portion of it, the, the amount of it, that goes of the sales and use tax that could go to school aid fund and also to revenue sharing. So today, the law says that, um, uh, the, the Constitution says the first two, cent, two cents as of 1994, which when you passed the bill to increase the sales tax, the, the uh, uh, Proposition A, that there's 2% two, two that goes to schools. Then of the other 4% of today's 6%, um, sixty percent goes to schools, so, uh, so uh, now they're going to say sixty percent of five percent, uh, meaning that's that's three percent plus two, or five percent of the seven percent would go to the school aid fund if this passes. Similarly, for the revenue sharing, um, they they say that the the, the Constitution says that zero point six goes to uh, revenue sharing out of four percent now it'll be out of five so that goes up uh, uh, so that it's about 0 0.75 out of seven percent uh, that can go to uh, revenue sharing the other thing they do is they exclude universities uh, from uh, the school aid fund so what are the laws the big the biggie is 5477 um, that's the one that raises the wholesale price on motor fuel um, and uh, and, and motor fuel is, is gasoline and, and diesel oil. Um, and um, there's two laws that actually uh, are part of that, the, uh, that particular item. Um, if you go down my list of things, there's a second item from the bottom says, using part of the first two years of combined fuel tax revenue to pay off long-term debt for past road construction bonds. That's also in 5477. Um, in 1997 was the last time they raised uh, the gasoline tax. At that time, Governor, it was Governor Engler, and they raised the gasoline tax four cents. Um, the, uh, there was a general feeling that they needed to raise it 14 cents to fix the roads, but the governor was not willing to go more than four cents. So the compromise was that they that the legislation that was passed only raised it four cents and they borrowed money to handle the rest of the road repairs that they needed at that time. Well, as you know, when you borrow money, you have to pay interest. And we still have outstanding, uh, out of that uh, roughly two and a half billion dollars, $1.9 billion of road debt, at which we're paying about 240 or 250 million a year. Uh, uh, in interest. And that comes out of the transportation fund today. It's money that can't be used to build roads. Um, the governor, um, in particular, does not like uh, having a lot of debt. Uh, and, but why did, why did this happen? Why did they change it such that some of the money would, would go for that? Well, the House, when they argued for why we didn't have to raise as much money, the uh, and they wanted to phase in over six years, uh, raising more. They said, well, we do not want to um, in, induce competitive inflation. What, and then what, they, what did they mean by that? Well, if you suddenly start fixing a lot of roads, you need to hire a lot of road builders. And they've, a lot of them have left the state. So, so if they have to start doing that, they're, they're going to have to, uh, um, th there'll be, there'll be, more roads, and, and, and if we don't have an, an increased number of road builders, the prices will go up. And that was what they meant by induced um, competitive inflation. So they wanted to stretch it out so that they slowly built up adding to the miles of roads. The House wanted to do six years. Of course, the road builders wanted no, no, uh, to do it right away at the maximum. They compromised on two years. So the first year, two thirds of the road funds goes to the bond debt uh, to, to pay off a good portion of it. Second year, another 460 million or a third. And then the third year on, uh, they don't. So they don't totally pay it off, but they pay off a good chunk of it, 
meaning that they're, they've really substantially reduced the interest and they, they, they will ultimately have more money to spend on the roads. So that's a part of that very fi significant 5477. Okay. Um, the sales and use tax. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the, the Constitution sets a maximum allowed of seven. They actually had to pass a law to pass the sales tax and a law to pa up the use tax from six to seven percent. So that's of those two laws. The earned income tax credit is a separate law. The vehicle registration fee for cars, trucks, and electric vehicles is a separate law. Um, and the at-risk program for 40 million uh, for uh, at-risk students is a separate law. And finally, there are three laws that deal with road warranties and competitive bidding. Um, today, um, Michigan mainly only has road warranties on state roads. They, um, and actually, I was surprised to learn, the uh, first time I did this, I didn't know this, so since then I got the answer. We actually have more, more projects under warranty in Michigan than any other state in the union. Um, but these are basically uh, the, the, the state highways. Um, and, and, and the local and county are not required to use warranties. I think some of, some of the county roads are, but not, not a lot not of them. So under, this, under these, these bills, the, the local and the county will be required to have uh, warranties. And uh, what they, whatever they do on the warranties, they have to Make sure the state has to agree that the warranty is a is a good warranty, <laughs> um, a, a properly done. Um, and finally, competitive bidding. Uh, there are no requirements for competitive bidding at the lower levels, and so now if a project's over a hundred million dollars, they will have to do uh, competitive bidding. Uh, and all of this, uh, they, the Michigan Department of Transportation will make sure that they're doing what needs to be done. So that's what's in the legislation. Now, what are the people on each, first of all, what does it mean if you vote yes? If you vote yes, then you pass the constitutional amendment, so you, the, the, the maximum sales tax is 7%. Seven, seven uh, you no longer have sales tax on gasoline, uh, and you don't have uh, universities uh, coming out of the school aid fund. You also activate these 10 other laws, which actually raise the money uh, for the roads and the other purposes. And what are the supporters saying? Well, probably uh, most people, if they've uh, uh, watched TV, have, or have seen an ad about making our roads and bridges safer for everyone and uh, you know, emphasizing that the, uh, we spend the least uh, for roads per capita of any state. Um, secondly, um, yes, it uh, guarantees all ta taxes paid at the pump go to transportation. It will only be the only st you know, state tax at the pump will be for, for transportation. Um, it guarantees that constitutional funding for education goes only to K-12 to schools, community colleges, and career technical education, and that fundings of local of schools and local government is not negatively impacted. Um, it restores the earned income tax credit for the working poor to 20% of the federal credit, offsetting increased taxes. Uh, it requires road builders to provide warranties on roads they build. And finally, it fixes the roads now, um, uh, saving the state money in, uh, ultimately and reducing motorist repair to cost. And, and I, I should have talked about this earlier, but if you, if you don't have enough money, what, what, they're, what they're saying is because they haven't had enough money, um, they, they have had to uh, resurface with asphalt, which doesn't last as long, so they have to repair more often instead of being able to repave uh, 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 it, it completely, uh, which takes more money but lasts longer. So that's, that's the argument on the, on the yes side. And who's, who are uh, the uh, supporters? Um, there is a coalition of uh, fi over 50 organizations called Safe Roads Yes, and that's the name of their website. Um, and it has the AFL-CIO. It has the business leaders for Michigan, the top CEOs in the state. It has the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce, which I understand spoke at the U of, U of M. It has the Grand Rapids Regional Chamber of Commerce and a lot of other local chambers of commerce. It does not include the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, which has no stand. Their members are divided. They did not take a position yes or no. Um, it, of course, 
uh, you, I'm sure you all know that the governor is in favor of it. The legislative leaders, the four legislative leaders from last December are in favor of it. And there are three new ones this time. So the current four uh, uh, legislative leaders, Democratic and Republican in each house, are in favor of it. So those are some of the ones. And there are people who voted for it, and there are people you know, on the other side, too. Um, there's the Michigan Environmental Council. There's the Michigan League for Public Policy, which is particularly concerned with low-income uh, people. Um, there is the Michigan Municipal League and the Michigan Township League and other you know, government uh, orgs like that. The Michigan Sheriff's Association, um, the Sierra Club, and the Small Business Association of Michigan. So that's the yes side. So what happens if you vote no? Well, sales tax stays at 6%. And, it's still, and the sales tax still applies to gasoline. And, and universities can get money out of the school aid fund. And the 10 laws that I talked about do not get activated. So uh, that means that there's no funding for roads or any other purposes. So that's what the no vote means. And what are the, what are the um, uh, opponents saying? Well, they're saying, uh, one, um, is increasing to, let's see. Um, it says proposal one increases taxes instead of prioritizing current funds to give more to roads. Um, it increases the sales tax, which is regressive, impacting middle class families. It allocates only 60% of funding increase for roads and 40% to other purposes. Um, in all true, true statement, activates 10 bills, several dealing with rates, which can be altered by the legislature without a vote of the people. It uses funds to pay off the road debt in the first two years, leaving less for roads. Uh, so you've heard me talk about uh, at least the second, third, fourth, and fifth of these. And then finally, it may uh, stop motorists from using their vehicle registration fees as an itemized deduction on their federal income tax return. And I put the word might, may stop them because the IRS has not ruled. The IRS will not rule on a hypothetical. It has not said whether it will, will or will not. And why, why are they saying this? I don't know if any of you have been around long enough, I have, to remember when uh, vehicle license plates, your registration fee was based on weight. It was not based on value. And why did it change? Because the, the uh, tax laws changed, so the IRS said, oops, Michigan, your, yours are based on weight, not value. You, your people won't be able to take it off. Guess what the legislature did? They changed the law to make it based on value, on your list price of your car. And, and they added the pseudo depreciation for three years. Uh, and we've all been able to, who, those of us who itemize have been able to take it off. Uh, so the, the question is, it's still based on value. The, 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 the pro side says it's still based on value. So even though it's not going down for three years, why would it change? The, 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 the no side says, ah, but you're not depreciating it at all, even if you stop after three years. And so therefore, they're going to take it away. Nobody knows because the IRS has not ruled. I will tell you that of all the bills that I talked about, the 10 bills, there is one, one of those 10 bills, the one dealing with vehicle registration fees, where a bill has already been in, introduced in the state legislature um, and basically saying, if the IRS rules, we're going to uh, change that back. And both Republicans and Democrats want to do that. So if there's anything that would change of the laws I told you about, that's the most likely if the IRS rules uh, uh, it, it, depending on how the IRS rules. Okay. Um, so who are the no supporters? Well, the one um, uh, organization on there that uh, uh, existed uh, was National Federation of Independent Businesses. Their members voted uh, to oppose this. Uh, there are uh, several uh, new organizations that were created. Um, the Citizens Against Middle Class uh, Tax Increases, and th that is, uh, was started by a political consultant named John Yob. Um, he did actually work for Snyder and, at one time, and he's now working for Rand Paul. Um, 
the Coalition Against Higher Taxes and Special Interest Deals, that is the, if you've heard ads, you've probably heard their ads. And they are the ones that spoke at the U of M uh, forum. Um, uh, the, the leader uh, of, of that group uh, is a man named Paul, uh, uh, Sag, a businessman out of Saginaw named Paul Mitchell. I thought he was going to be the speaker at, at the, but I understand that his chief aide spoke uh, in, in the, at, at that session. Um, the Concerned Taxpayers of Michigan, uh, that is um, Tom Mc, uh, former state rep Tom Mill, M McMillan out of Rochester, and Protect Michigan Taxpayers is a businessman uh, out of Grand Rapids named Keith Allard. And also, I should put on there um, the Attorney General, uh, Bill Schutte, uh, is, 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 does, is on the no side. So the, those are the ones that are on the no side. Um, so this is a summary statement. It's taken um, from a Free Press reporter. You know, he, he tried to sum up roughly the major points in the bill. The essence of the plan is to remove the sales tax, which is not spent on roads, from fuel taxes, from fuel sales, and impose higher fuel taxes, which are spent on roads, without sharply increasing the pump price of gas. The sales tax hike would then replace and supplement the money schools and local governments would lose from having the sales tax removed from fuel sales. And that's the bulk of what happens with, with the dollars involved in this proposal. Um, that's really all that I'm going to say. I just want to direct you to some places where you can go if you want more information. I mentioned the House Fiscal Agency. There's also the Senate Fiscal Agency, which does the same job. And they, you can go to their websites, house.mi.gov slash HFA or senate.michigan.gov slash SFA, and they have information on this package. Um, what I recommend is the, probably the easiest to read is to go to the, the website of the Citizens Research Council of Michigan. They also spoke at U of M Dearborn. Um, and their website is crcmich.org. They're a 99-year-old organization that has been evaluating state proposals for many years, evaluates the, the state budget, knows more about the state budget than I think any other organization other than the people that handle it. <laughs> um, and they have a 23-page report or a three-page summary. <laughs> um, so you can read the three-page summary uh, to give you a, a good feel for uh, this uh, uh, package. And finally, uh, the league's website is vote411.org, and every voter in Michigan can go there. And what you, did you get a, the, did you pass out the handout? The, the one page? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you all have a one-page handout, uh, if you didn't pick it up. Um, it has on it the wording of the proposal. It has on a summary of the revenue and expenditures. So that's what's on that. Vote 401 also has the information on the yes and no side uh, information that I pri uh, uh, provide here. So it's basically a two-page uh, a, a summary of this. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll take questions. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, I, w I will make one more comment. There is one more website I should point you to. And uh, that is lwvmi.org. That is the, the Legal and Voters of Michigan's website. And on the home page, it has a link to the handout. It has a link to a two page uh, uh, of the Vote 411. It has a link to an early version of this presentation. As, as the four of us started going around the state talking, um, we updated this a little. So there, you know, uh, based on the questions we were getting to try to make it clearer. So it's not exactly what you saw here today, but it's 90-95% it of what you saw here today. Um, so you, you can see those things uh, on the State League's website. That's it. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. Do you want me to go on the other side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent hard work. I have questions from the audience. Is it true that if Prop 1 fails, the state legislature may likely look to the Michigan Uninsured Motorist Fund to fund road repair? Okay, good question because <coughs> State Representative Pete Lucido of Shelby Township um, is, uh, has, 
uh, introduced a bill to, to try to do this. The, here's the problem with it. The, the money doesn't belong to the state of Michigan. It belongs, it's, it's an insurance fund that go, the insurance companies, um, that, that, they can't touch that fund, that funding right now. Um, I was, I've been, you know, I've been reading anything I could read for the last two months on Proposal 1, because uh, I knew I was going to be doing stuff like this. I didn't know how many, but I knew I'd be doing a few. And I've been read, I've read every op-ed on them. Um, and there was an op-ed by the, um, former term limited, uh, a, a state rep, uh, who was head of the Appropriations Committee. Uh, not, not working? Oh, okay, you're right. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just said that I've been reading a lot. And, huh? Can't. Hmm. This one doesn't work. This, this one is for the cable, so. You can't hear me? Okay. All right. I, okay. Well, I have to be at both. Okay. Um, uh, there. Uh, can't go to. Well, I don't know if that's. No, I can't do that, or it won't, won't go on the cable. Um, the the um, former head of the House Appropriations Committee. Uh, uh, a term li limited uh, representative from uh, uh, Oakland County um, said that there is, uh, he basically went through why you couldn't go back and do some of the proposals that are being pro uh, proposed, namely, namely that there's they 50 some billion dollars that the legislature appropriates of which only 10 billion is non-restricted. You saw that there's a lot of things restricted uh, uh, by just what we talked about here. Well, for a lot of other things, there's stuff, re you know, natural resources and so forth, there's restriction. So most of the money that the legislature actually uh, appropriates officially is they have to do what, they, what, what the law says or the Constitution. Um, so there's, there isn't that much. Uh, and what there is goes to things like um, the state police, the government, uh, the judicious, judicial system, you know, uh, Prisons, universities, etc. Um, so that that's that's one thing. Then he said some some people want to take money from the natural resources fund. That's restricted. Some people want to take it from the uninsured motorist claim fund. That isn't even ours. We can't we can't touch that. We don't have any control over it. So again, they would. That's 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 why that's not an option. <laughs> How does the expansion of the school aid fund to community colleges affect current local funding of those institutions? Well, the difference is that up till a few years ago, they always took it out of the general fund. Uh, but the, but under uh, since since 2012, uh, they have uh, been taking some money out of the school aid fund. Um, but now it's because of the words higher education in the Constitution, which is now gone and now specifically calls out the community colleges. So I, I guess I could say is they now, they now can take it out of the school, the school aid fund, uh, which people didn't used to think they could, which even, but they could, and, and they still can take it out of the general fund. So uh, it, there's two places to take it out of, take it from. Will a yes vote probably make a university education more expensive? Um, I, I got asked the question about, so how will universities get funding if we're now taking some money out of the school aid fund for the last couple of years? Um, you notice that I said that we, we took $285 million out of the general fund for roads. You might not see that because of these other raises, they probably won't take any more money out of roads because of the money, they're adding more money to the transportation fund. And that, I see where that funding might therefore be used for things that they were taking out school aid fund. I don't know. That really is up to the legislature on how they do it. I, I can't predict. Is there any provision in the law to reduce the gas tax if the roads are repaired or are we going to be in a position of looking for projects in the future? Well, um, one problem is that 
I don't know about your, uh, the Wayne County Road Commission, but I'll tell you in Oakland County, they have a long list of projects they want to do. And they prioritize what's for this year, what's for next year, what's for two years down, three years down. And uh, they already have a lot of projects. And I, I was asked how long, you know, before we get our roads back t uh, to good shape. Um, and I've read 10 years, even with this money. It's, it is going to take a while. You know, it took us 10 years to go from 10% bad roads to 38%. It's going to take a few years to get us back to that. So, and the legislature can do that. They can reduce the gas tax uh, in the future if they choose to do that. That's not in the Constitution. But I don't think you'll see it for quite a few years. Why are toll roads not allowed in Michigan? Well, I worked for... General Motors for 34 years, and as you all know, we're, we're the automotive capital of the world, and auto companies in Michigan did not want toll roads. And uh, we, you know, so we didn't put toll roads in in Michigan. Thank you. How, how does Ohio get a billion dollars more for their roads? They, they ra oh. <laughs> no, no, I, they, they, well, let me put it this way. They raise more per, per capita, and they also have a higher population. So that combination gives them, you know, more, uh, more money, you know, for roads. That's why. But they do, they do per capita, you know, uh, ask, get, get more money from, from people in, Mich in Ohio or people who drive roads in Ohio. How will enactment change total Michigan taxes paid by persons and businesses, especially as compared to other states' total taxes? Um, let me see whether I, 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 was, I was trying to get some information on that. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, uh, I, as I, I told you what the, what the sales tax, no, where, where we went from, you know, 37th to to 21st, we'd be like Indiana. Um, and uh, w w let me see that question again. Okay. Um, totally by persons and businesses. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I know the, the split between persons and businesses because I don't know, you know, how much of the, I, I have no information on how much of the gasoline tax is paid by businesses buying it for their business vehicles versus cars. I don't know. Um, uh, but, um, oh. I, I'll go walk a little bit further. Um, so I don't know how to split uh, the persons and businesses, but um, I'm looking at some uh, research, uh, uh, some information here um, uh, on some hypothetical examples, okay? So uh, let me tell you, uh, for example, if somebody is uh, earning uh, $75,000 a year, and they own two cars, and they drive about 20,000 miles per year, um, they would probably see an increase of about $312 a year in, in, in taxes. Um, if, they, if it was 50,000 and, and the same, it would be more like $268 a year. Um, and I have seen things from the Mackinac Center that go up into the 500s, but they don't, they aren't, Distinguishing, you know, persons and ca and business, it's sort of like averaging the total amount. So I don't, I don't, I don't know how much, how how to use that. Um, now, people who are getting to get the who are like thirty thousand dollars a year with two kids, and getting the earned income tax credit, they're actually going to pay less money, uh, a, a little bit less money than than they would today. Um, and it depends if if they're. Um, you know, the earned income tax credit was designed so they didn't have to pay additional sales tax. The question is whether they have a car or not. I, you know, that would also vary on, on how they were impacted. So, This is regarding the increase in vehicle registration fees. Is it confined to the 33 to $155 million <laughs> from your handout? A friend pays hundreds of dollars in Arizona based on the value of the vehicle. Okay, well, I, I will say that 
that that is an error on our handout. The maximum is not 155. It was I know I know how that came to be because the chart in the law has a law showing what each thousand dollars up to thirty thousand would be, and then it has a sentence that says for every thousand after that add uh, five dollars, and so. We didn't, we didn't go beyond that. <laughs> and therefore, um, that number is incomplete. I, just, I did have somebody uh, a, a few nights ago say, my, uh, I just looked at my license plate, uh, my vehicle registration, and I paid 212 Well, it turned out the guy probably bought a Mercedes Benz for probably about $58,000. And it, had, it was a 2004, but it, it had done the three depreciations, but it was still pretty highly valued, and so he was paying about 212 So yes, you can pay more vehicle registration fees if you buy an, a car over $30,000. That doesn't, and that does not qualify, that's an error. Okay, thank you, we have a sharp audience. <laughs> and the final question, when do the provisions of the referendum come into effect if a yes vote wins? Are the dollar amounts shown on a per year basis or over a two year basis? Okay, the dollar amounts I showed you were the third year. Now I said I would say it's the differences. I told you about the road debt. Let me tell you some other differences. Uh, one, I mentioned that the vehicle registration fee doesn't go into effect until January 1 of next year. And it really doesn't have a lot of effect the first year because uh, the first year they pay the same price uh, vehicle registration fee they would pay this year. It's just that they don't get discounts in subsequent. So that that part of the income will go up slower. Um, the second thing is the earned income tax credit. Uh, it won't happen in the first year because it really isn't doesn't happen until the following fiscal year as a credit to the previous year's tax. So it, 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 that, that expenditure won't be there. In fact, because of that, there's actually the school aid fund gets a little bit more than 200 million the first year, um, and uh, but uh, it, it's you know, it, and, and the general fund gets a little bit more the first year. So that those are those are the the changes. So so the significant date is October 1st of this year. That's when the gasoline tax, the no sales tax on gasoline, and the sales tax would go into effect. Vehicle registration fee would be in January. So those and the and earned income tax credit the following year. Yes. Oh. No. Oh. I, I, I okay. think that's it. We're okay. Not, we're not, okay. We're not taking Oh, which one was that? Uh, about the car vehicle registration. And you said there was a mistake in your handout. I, di I did say the handout is a mistake. Um, the 155 is for 30, you're paying about $30,000 a year, a, a list price. If your list price was over 30000 it can go up. It goes up $5 for every 1000 So if you have a car that's cost, uh, listed at fifty thousand dollars. That's twenty times five. That's another hundred dollars. Okay. So that that's that's the way the current law is, and the current law doesn't change in that respect. It's only the discount part that changes. Well, what if you have a car that's uh, over two years old? That doesn't. It, 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 it stopped. It that it, it it it's already at the at the vehicle registration fee that it will have as long as you still own it. As I say, my car's seven years old. I've paid the same vehicle registration fee uh, since 2010. 